What up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of Great White, which arrives in theaters and on demand and on digital July 16, I'm here talking with the director of this new film, Martin Wilson. How are you, Martin? I'm really excited, uh, really happy, and I uh, can't wait for the film to, to get released in the States. Excellent. So thank you for taking the time. Uh, there are a lot of shark movies uh, out there, you know, some are more iconic than others. Uh, what made you want to contribute your own shark movie into the pool? And what were some of the things that you did to separate Great White from the rest in this genre? Well, I think firstly, I because I'm a, uh, after uh, 20 years directing TV commercials and ever since day one of that wanting to make a movie and getting so close um, so many times to direct my first feature, I think firstly, it was the opportunity of, of actually been given the chance to do it, which was with Great White. Um, I've always come from uh, a love of creature features myself and genre films. I love The Thing, um, films like Aliens, um, you know, uh, Fright Night, the original Fright Night. So these are all the films I loved as a kid. So getting the opportunity to do a genre film, a thriller, a survival thriller on the open water was just a dream come true. So that was the first thing. Secondly, the, the um, to, to, to get a how do you how do you differentiate yourself in the pantheon of shark films how, how and that's a tough one um you know obviously we weren't trying to make uh citizen kane of the shark films which is obviously jaws which is the high watermark uh we were just trying to do something which was a real roller coaster a uh, survival thriller for me the point of difference was was looking at the location looking at what does what hasn't someone seen before in a shark film set in Australia? You know, those really rich, visceral, beguiling landscapes of Northern Australia, tropical Northern Australia, where it's, it's very beautiful. The water's got that uh, turquoise, the green emerald vibe. You just want to take a dip into that ocean. But the irony um, uh, to juxtapose to that is the, is what lurks under the water. You know, what, what's that sort of primal, uh, monstrous evil that could that could take you at any second. So it's it's working those suspense elements, um, and then it's it's trying to find, you know, the nuances in the characters because we're spending so much time with them on a raft and what makes them three D nuanced and human. So all these little things that we were trying to you know seed into the film just to give it, just to elevate it and just give it a little bit of a point of difference. Part of my ignorance, because I've never been to Australia, I would love to someday, uh, but uh, are there really spots around Australia waters that are more shark infested than others? And I mean, does it come with the uh, certain time of the year and stuff like that? Well, I think, you know, because Australia is an island, um, we're, we're surrounded by water. Um, there are so many vulnerable areas let's just say and mm. i and you know and there's i don't i think we're, we're it's all year round there's the danger of, of sharks in in australia you know we we mm. just um we're in that part of the world that part of the ocean where it, it is we are vulnerable to attacks you know and because we spend a lot of time in the water um that only increases the, the potential the possibility of these you know of the of that happening uh, let's talk about the uh, the cast, Katrina, Aaron, Kimi, and Tim. How did you round up these wonderful group of actors? How did they get on board this project? Well, obviously, we're, we're looking for a very <clears throat> like a dynamic sort of contemporary mix of, uh, of characters, uh, nationalities, which re reflect society today, which I think is cool. Um, Aaron Jacobenko was, uh, you know, we're, I was looking for a, sort of a, a lead man, a hero type character, but with a lot of heart and soul, a lot of humor. Um, and uh, I think Aaron embodies that perfectly. He had a lot of experience in the water, uh, very dynamic. Uh, Katrina Bowden was uh, just a wonderful um, lead uh, focal point for us. Uh, I think she is uh, has a great emotional depth and content to her performance and also you know, she's a very physical actor and just really embraced the action elements of the part. And then you have, um, uh, you know, Kimmy and, uh, and Tim, of course, <clears throat> uh, they both, you know, both bring their qualities are very, very sort of sensitive, emotional characters in, in their way, but with, the, with their level of strength 
Um, interestingly, they both have uh, Japanese fathers, so there's that a really, uh, I, I think, added a, another level to to their characters um, and then what they were portraying. And um, of course, TK from New Zealand, he's he added a sense of brevity and fun and humor to the sense of brevity and fun and humor to the piece. Okay, yeah, let's get to the million dollar question, shall we? The sharks themselves, I'm guessing they're CGI, is that correct? And talk to me about designing or creating the sharks that you see in this film. Uh, how many designs do you go through until you come up with the sharks that you wanted to realize on the screen? <clears throat> well, I think it's, a, it's an interesting one because there's three, there's three types of sharks in this film. There's the hmm. um, carefully selected stock sharks that we, we crafted there. Then there's the animatronic shark which um, I know there was one in uh, Jaws called Bruce. We had Brenda, who wasn't, uh, certainly wasn't named after my lawyer. <laughs> and we had the, uh, the CG sharks. So there was a lot of, um, I, I guess, fusing those three types of sharks was, was what we were trying to do and make that as seamless as we could. And yes, there was a lot of different iterations about the shark and obviously trying to make it believable and real to a certain size, five meters, um, and with the types of markings and stuff. So yeah, we, we did spend a, a bit of time on that. I've always heard stories of how a nightmare it is to be shooting a film in the ocean, not to mention the salt water can ruin equipments and cameras. <clears throat> did you yeah. experience such challenges shooting this film in that environment? And if so, what were some of the measures that you took to remedy that? Well, I think the hardest thing, it, it's, <clears throat> it is very, very tough shooting on water. It's, um, there's no secret about that. You've got wind, you've got tides, um, you've got rain, you, 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 mm. you know, you've got um, everything. You've got stingers in the water, you've got jellyfish. Um, you, you've then got, then you're shooting in tanks and you're shooting in claustrophobic environments with, you, you know, where the actors have to hold their breath. So, and, and I've got 25 days to do all this in. So there's all these little elements. And you've, got the, you've also got the sun, which can really, you know, uh, cause havoc, sunburn, dehydration. There's all these sort of things. And, of course, we mitigate all that through the professional process of the film, the film crew. Um, but, yeah, look, it, it's, it, you, you do as much preparation as you can to prepare for it all, but you, you just cannot control what the weather's going to do. Um, or what the you know where where tides necessarily are going to go, or at what point when the wind's just going to go so crazy, you have to shut the shoot down. Wow, it's very impressive. Uh, as Thank I was you. watching it, I was like, wow, how did they do that? That's imp- I want to see the the bonus features on the Blu-ray if there if there <laughs> if there's ever there's, one. There's, <laughs> a, there's a there's definitely a couple out there, and there's some great behind yes. the scenes stuff which they're hoping to. I saw some the other day because for Supernova in Australia or Comic-Con, um, there's some great behind the scenes. So I'm sure the Priscilla and the guys will be able to provide you with, um, and Sam can provide you with some awesome behind the scenes stuff. As I'm winding down, uh, as you know, Jaws became a franchise. A Deep Blue Sea had sequels. 47 Meters Down had a sequel. So yeah. is there going to be a Great White 2? You'll have to ask the producers, I think, uh, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so it's not part of the plan from the beginning? I don't think so. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, people love franchises, so maybe, but um, uh, yeah, you just you just never know. All right. And finally, what's next on your horizon? Are you staying in the creature genre? I love the creature genre, and I've definitely got several projects that are firmly in this, this world. And uh, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, yeah, I've got uh, quite advanced scripts um, uh, in that area, in that world. Um, you know, once with a, a werewolf concept and one with a big cat concept set out in the bush in Australia. So I'm, I'm firmly in that world of uh, creature features at this point in time. Looking forward to them. For my fans at home, everybody go check out Great White, arriving in theaters and on demand and on digital July 16. Martin, thank you so much for talking to me. Thanks. And congratulations. Thank you.